Sarisa, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell, I've switched background again and I would really appreciate it if you could let me know what you think of it. Like, I can't really decide which I like best or better <laughs> and uh, it would be really great if you could just let me know. So today it is time to do my Spookathon wrap up. I did actually vlog throughout the last week and I put up about five reading vlogs so if you haven't seen them yet make sure to check them out but in this video I'm just gonna kind of uh, recap the week pretty much, um, give you the TLDR version for those of you who don't want to watch five whole videos of the books I read and what I thought about them. So as you might know, I ended up reading three books all together and uh, I'm just gonna go through the challenges kind of and uh, give you my reviews as I go. So the first challenge was to read a thriller and I kind of combined this with the challenge to read a book with purple on the cover and to read a book with uh, pictures. And for this I read I Know You Know by Gillian McMillan. This is a thriller, as you can tell it has this kind of purple pinkish, I don't really know, we're just gonna call it purple color on the cover and also because it does center around a podcast there are occasionally these like the like icons, the logos of the podcast in the book so that counts as pictures. This little book ticks up three whole challenges which is really cool. So basically this book follows as I already said a podcast and um, basically like 20 years ago I think two 12 year old boys were found dead and um, their third friend who had to stay home that night survived um, because obviously he didn't go out to um, do whatever the boys were doing. So they did put away somewhere for their murder but um, the guy kind of insisted on being innocent and eventually ended up taking his own life in prison. And now 20 years later the third kid who survived um, basically uh, is putting on this podcast to trying to reopen the case because the police refused to reinvestigate it and he's convinced that the guy that was convicted is actually the killer and he's just trying to find out um, more basically about what happened. That is the premise and I thought it sounded really interesting. I'm a big fan of podcasts like Serial and um, this like continuous story of like investigating a crime and I thought actually that the podcast or like the crime podcast aspect of this book was done really really well. Um, the transcription of the podcast seemed really realistic to me like I could really imagine them being actual podcasts and like having like the moderator of Serial or somebody tell them to me so I thought that aspect was really well done. However, <laughs> most other things about this book I really did not enjoy. Um, we follow several perspectives, we follow the podcast obviously, then we follow the mother of one of the two boys that died and um, somebody else I think, yeah, and the police obviously. The plot because of that doesn't really have a clear direction I feel like. There's a lot of characters being set up in the beginning to be one way and then all of a sudden they're like completely different by the end. There's a lot of hints at mysteries that aren't ever resolved or that aren't really that mysterious in the end. And the ending especially of this book was so unsatisfying and such a big letdown. Um, I don't even know how the author was like herself was like satisfied with that. I don't really understand honestly. I thought it was a really pretty badly written thriller and I, I didn't feel any suspense throughout really. And the book does try at a plot twist um, but I feel like it is so obvious <laughs> and kind of overplayed a little bit and also not satisfying enough in itself so like I don't even know what to say anymore I thought this book was pretty bad I gave it two stars I really did enjoy it I thought it was a quick read but like that's kind of all <laughs> the next book I read was for the challenge to read a book with a spooky word in a title and that is Hex by Thomas Ald Hewell. Now if you've seen my vlogs, oh my god, you've already heard me rant about this ad nauseum, but like I, you know, I probably could keep going forever, let's be honest. So I thought the premise and the setup of this book sounded really, really interesting. Basically the book is set in 2012 in a small town in the US and uh, the sort of special thing about this town is that it is haunted by a 17th century witch. She was pretty much like murdered for and tortured, among other things, for being a witch. 
and uh, came back pretty much to haunt the town ever since. So when she came back the first time, she would cause people to commit suicide because she would whisper like evil things to them or something like that. And also she had like the evil eye. And so eventually they managed to sew her eyes and mouth shut. And ever since then, she's been pretty harmless, I guess. All she does is kind of appear around random places in the town. And because of that, uh, the town has developed a pretty strict like security system and they've like installed surveillance cameras everywhere they've developed an app called Hex where they can track her whereabouts and there are pretty strict punishments in place for people that break the rules um, the people in town aren't really able to leave the town because after a certain amount of time they start getting suicidal uh, and will actually kill themselves so um, they pretty much have to stay in a town and also they are really afraid of what's going to happen if people find out that they are being haunted by this witch so they try their very best to uh, keep it from the outside world. However, this book pretty much follows a group of teenagers that are really trying to push the boundaries on those rules. They're trying to find out why the witch is acting the way that she is because she does follow certain patterns throughout her days. And um, they are just trying to see like how far they can push her or like exact, like just trying to do some experiments as you would maybe expect of like 18 year old boys. And then the book goes from there, it, as I said, follows the teenagers, it follows the leader, the leaders of like the town kind of thing, and it also follows um, this, the Grant family. So there's kind of a lot of different characters in this book, and I didn't really feel like any of them were particularly well developed. They all seem pretty bland to be honest, but that wasn't even my biggest problem with this book. I went into this thinking it was going to be extremely terrifying because it sounds terrifying imagining like a witch with her eyes so shut like haunting a town. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that you could do incredible things with that setup. Unfortunately, this author didn't. As I said, the witch is pretty harmless and she doesn't really do anything except appear in places and people like hang dish towels or something over her so they don't have to look at her and people are pretty act like pretty nonchalant around her so that doesn't really inspire fear in the reader when the characters in the book don't really seem to care that much beyond that i thought the plot was extremely stretched out and whatever like shreds of it there were it wasn't compelling at all the idea of like finding out the reasons for why the witch is acting the way she's acting was abandoned pretty quickly even though that's what I was really caring about I thought there was like gonna be a big like plot twist or a revelation of something interesting but that never came and it was just so boring I was bored to tears by this book I swear I wasn't scared at all I didn't care if bad things happened to the character characters because honestly most of them are pretty shit people and uh, would start like torturing the witch at times in like really evil ways and I just did not care if they died because I honestly wanted to kill them myself. The family unit is portrayed extremely strangely in this book, um, like the traditional family unit, I don't even know because the grand family that we follow in the book uh, has like, well there's two parents and there's two children, two sons, and they specifically kind of say the parents like, oh this is my favorite child and this is my favorite child. And so they have each like their own child that they care the most about, and then when something happens to the other, like to their own child, they get like jealous that the other parent's child, like, were, wasn't harmed, and I'm just like so confused by that concept, like, what are you saying here? Like these are both your children, you should care about both of them except instead of like just about your own favorite child, like I don't even know. Also, it, this is something I only noticed by reading other reviews, but when I read it, I definitely noticed it, is that this book is oddly and like disturbingly misogynistic at times. Um, there's really no redeemable female characters in this at all. Um, the women are portrayed in like just pretty bad light all around and there's such a degree of like random boob violence in this book like the author has some sort of fixation of on breasts or something and like hurting them I don't know like don't ask me but that happens so much in this book that's like it's not just like a one-time occurrence but I definitely don't think it's normal to have this degree of like violence on boobs specifically that you can see in this book so I don't even know like I don't know, I hated it. <laughs> I hated everything about this book. I wanted to DNF it, but I also wanted to finish it just so that I could say I finished it and like fully like 
vent my anger about it, to be justified in my anger about it, and uh, I did it. I read all like 380 fucking pages of this book. It was terrible. I hated it. I hated it. I gave it one star. I don't recommend you read it. It's so boring. <laughs> like it's such a, it was such a waste of my time to read this. And I just, I just hope you don't make the same mistakes as I did. And the saving grace of this week's reading for me was reading the book that's not set in our time period. And that was Alice by Christina Henry. This is a Alice in Wonderland retelling, but I think it's more accurate maybe to say that it's a story inspired by Alice in Wonderland because there's like tons of elements obviously from the story, but it doesn't really follow the same plot at all, <laughs> so I don't really feel like it's fair to call it a retelling. This book was so good, oh, I loved it. In this book we follow Alice and she's 26 years old I think and when she was 16 she was pretty much like sold to the rabbit um, to be like sold as a sex slave or something like that to another crime boss whatever in the underworld and she managed to escape but nobody believed her story and they put her in an asylum, insane asylum and now at 26 she's been there for 10 years and she met um, in the cell next to her that like they can only communicate by like talking through like a mouse hole but she met a man called Hatcher and he's like a serial killer or something and they kind of strike up a friendship and eventually manage to escape the insane asylum and then the story kind of goes from there as they figure things out, they're on the run, um, but also trying to get revenge and, and things like that. So, I love the book. <laughs> it was really good. It's definitely very gruesome and messed up at times. There's a lot of violence in it and it's definitely very adult, so like be aware going into that. But um, I thought it was really well written. I really cared about the characters of Alice and Hatcher. They just seemed very unique to me and like I really wanted them to succeed and even though it was such a terrible story like there's so many bad things happening in this book it had a whimsical fairy tale like feel to it and I feel like if you can manage to do that then you must be a very talented writer like that's not something that just anybody could do there's definitely some like magical supernatural elements to this and like monsters but also it's a little more it's, I don't even know if it's magical realism or just like fantasy, I, I don't really know what to call this but I really really like the way that the elements of Alice in Wonderland were taken and like adapted to, put, to be put into the story and uh, I thought it was so well done, I really really enjoyed it and as I said I gave it 4 stars, this is actually the first book in a duology and the sequel is called The Red Queen and this author also has other like I'm not sure if they're retellings or again like inspired stories but she has a book called Lost Boy which is inspired by Peter Pan and uh, The Mermaid which I think just came out this year and it's like a little mermaid story or something so I'm so excited <laughs> honestly like I finished this book yesterday and I had to restrain myself from not just like ordering everything she's ever written at like once because I just am so hyped and I can't wait to read more about this author, oh my god. <sighs> so yeah, I was able to finish off the week on a quite positive note, which is the saving grace, as I said, of this readathon, because apart from that, while I did uh, manage to finish all the challenges, I read two very terrible books and like honestly that is so demotivating especially when you're like going into the books like wanting to read them I mean honestly Hex was another five star prediction of mine and this is the second five star prediction that has completely completely disappointed me and uh, I'm just mad okay I'm mad <laughs> anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you had a fantastic spookathon let me know in the comments down below how your reading went and uh, if you've um, enjoyed my content throughout this week i would love to know as well thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new videos every tuesday and friday and in the meantime check out some other videos i did and i will see you then have a lovely week